All right, boys. Right then. Chucking these cams in today. High lift cams that I bought off Jacker Boy. I think these are out of the old black K11, uh, K11 BBW. I don't think, I don't think that guy's with us anymore. Um, but I think these cams are out of his car that he ran in there. So these are, I think you can buy cams from companies which are kind of resized and made. But these are actually original, original K11 cams which have been, I don't know, resized and ground down to be the correct size, uh, to be high lift. So I think usually with the other ones, they'll just be, I'm not too, I'm not too clued up, but they'll be ground up, but you keep your original shims and stuff. Um, but these ones actually come with separate shims which go in the cups. And obviously, yeah, just give you a bit more power, give you a bit more lift on the cam, a bit more fuel, that kind of thing. So, yeah. A lot of people say you need to remap when you put these in. Um, but I'm just gonna say, screw it and just see how it runs. Cause, yeah, why not, man? But yeah, cams and shims going in. Let's see how we get on. Right, so first step is gonna be rocker cover off. So obviously we're just going to get rid of everything that's in the way. Take that filter tube off, get rid of the plugs. Coily packs. It's a happy gasket that is. Yeah man, so maybe like if your gasket looks like this. I know it says like replace, I think even if you take it apart anyway, but this looks fucking brand new. Because you need to get new one when they're dry and brittle. Yeah, like this is still quite bendy. Yeah, it's well what is? Yeah. Like I can still squeeze it, like it's still soft as shit. And like, it's got quite a deep channel that sits in. So. Yeah, yeah, it's really deep groove. Yeah. The engine looks healthy, man. Yeah. Gasket's clean and shit in the inside. Yeah. Really good one. Those gears are a lot smaller than I thought they were. Yeah. So yeah. Can we, oh, if you just put that there. Yeah. Okay. I was just looking if we can tuck it anywhere else. Yeah. So what we got to do is get these two cams out, of course. Um, priority is keeping these gears and chain in the exact same place because if they shift, then your timing will be out and your engine could just munt itself. Um, because of the cams we've bought as well. We will have to get these, uh, we'll be putting those shims into those cups there. So we've got to get a magnet, pop them out. Um, and it should be one shim in each pocket. And then, yeah, we should be good to go. Okay. So if you're on the gear end of the engine, this is just for perspective. You want these two rockers to be facing at two o'clock-ish and then these third rockers to be facing at 10. So you want these two and these two to be facing each other perfectly like this. That's just where the engine's top dead center. So you want those facing up and those facing up and they just wanna be pointing at each other basically. So get yourself a 22 and a breaker. Take the right gear and you should be able to just pull those into position. Feels a bit scary but just work it around slow.
even to me. Yes, yeah, so it's these two. These two. Get your eyes on that, see what you think then. Needs to rotate that way a little bit. Yeah, okay. we, we turn it clockwise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you want to get all these rockers off. Um, they all need to go back on in the exact same position and in the same place. Obviously, these two, these do. Um, but as your engine gains mileage, everything wears in and it's just safer to put it all back in the same place. So I'm going to whip all these off and then we're going to mark up the... Well, I'll do, them. I'll do that now. Actually. Yeah, I'll say get like a rug or something. And some Tipex. There's one on the bench, like, probably. This should have plenty of grit in it for my engine, this should. Any grit? It's 300 grit, this is. 300 grit? Yeah. Matt, that's how keep it right down, that will make it nice and smooth. <laughs> right, I've got some Tipex. I don't know how old it is. What's the date on him? It's Tipex about a day. Taste it. Oh, it's got till. 17,006, so. Oh, we fucking bless What are we on? 2,000 and something over. 23 now, yeah. BC, so. eh? Okay, we've got. Maybe BC, like... now we're on. Nah, no, I'd. No, it's the other one. Oh, the least consistent Oh, brush. man. So that's that, yeah. Okay, so we've got these marks. So like I said, it, these must go in the back, back in the exact same position. So this tooth here with this hole in the chain will line up with that one, and that's going to be in line. I think whatever we do with the engine now, as long as they go back in that position, should be fine. Let's get it done. All right, then. Two. Right, so we're just gonna shut up, man. Just gonna draw the engine at the minute, just so when we're taking these caps off and stuff, remember we can place them on the drawing and make sure they go back in the right place because I ain't getting confused. I make it make sense. It's just... You do, you man. As long as you can read it. Yeah, man. Give me a second. I'll just have to look. She's still looking all right. Maz is doing his drawing at the minute. Um, I've got some plans to be fair. I'm, I'm booked in to get the whole car painted in February time. I don't know if I want to tell you what colour yet, but uh, yeah, getting a full respray up by Dave Lomax up in Derby. Top job, check him out on Instagram. Does really good resprays, uh, good prices as well. Do whole cars, you can do repairs, rust repairs, dents, and everything. Man, go hit him up, have a look. He's a top guy, love him. So, yeah, we're going up to him in February and get a full respray. And then, probably gonna get some new wheels as well, get something a bit more rare and genuine, a bit better size. It might go up to 14s, but yeah, I'm keeping the, the facelift front end. I'm obviously just going to get a new new bumper on it because they, they are damaged. And then, yeah, Dave's going to do the whole car for me, get rid of all the dents and scratches and stuff. And should be looking fresh as. What about? Wait, steady where we're going to knock it or something. If that falls off, they're fucked. Like if we knock it, move or anything. I think we'll just feel it though. I think that's fine, feel it. Don't do that. Watch it. Or just... Watch it, hang on, watch. See? Oh, to be fair, it don't move then. Yeah, so, that's yeah. it, man. I think it is. Just keep doing that. Right then, uh... <laughs> right, this is the scary bit, then I start uh, chucking stuff out. Right, these, all these top bolts have to be undone in a certain order. You might have two more there if you've got a dizzy engine, which I guess would only be a CG13, but obviously we're, I'm on CGA3, so I've got no dizzy, it's a coil pack. Um, so, this is the order that you're going for. Obviously, that's just to progressively loosen them and not just make one end 
with more pressure on it than the other. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and undo those now. I right, get your 10 mil on a rotchet. Okay, so I'm going these one first, yeah? Yeah, outside first, then to inside. Just gonna crack them on. Two. So we've just done bottom row. One to eight. So we've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that was like if it's dizzy cap. Yeah. yeah, so we're skipping those. I'm just going straight to. I'm going back to one in on the next one. Yeah. So top one. The thing is, there's probably mechanics out there watching this that are like, have done 100,000 pairs of these. Yeah. Just think, just whack them out. Yeah, just like, whacking on doing any old order. We're just unexperienced and doing it ourselves, you know what I mean? So we've got to be careful. Yeah, there's a couple of spanner tinkers, isn't it? A couple That's of novices like, just messing. Just spanners, are we? Just spanners, spannering. A couple of knobs. Don't fucking try and niche me with the same brush. You know what's mad though? What's that? I've had these since like. I've had these cams since like June or something. Yeah. And I just thought I'd rather wait till it gets fucking cold, you know what I mean? To do yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it's, it when it's like. It's backfire though, because it's lovely and warm. Yeah, look at this. Like almost. See some blue in the sky? Should we shut up before I lose count? Yep. I've just done eight. <laughs> I've done eight. A couple of ADHD kids, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So. Yeah, top bottom. This one, boys, uh, uh, this is a one unit, so this comes off as one piece. Cool. Right, so they're all loose. I'm just going to whack them all off and I'm going to play some. All in the same place, just so we know they go back. On this dead sturdy, uh... Oh, yeah. yeah, to be fair. You can put, like, a box here or something, and it's sturdy until you touch it. So, like, if you just make sure, absolutely under no circumstances to touch that. And definitely don't, like, balance it on a screwdriver. You'll be sound. Are you done? Turn that off, right, then I'm going to fucking show you. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Right, so who's there? Oh, I don't want that on there, man. <laughs> Do what you want, then, man. I want it on the floor or something. Do you suffer with anxiety or something, man? Do you reckon? Yeah, bro, this is going on the floor, fuck that. Alright, bro. I'm putting it there, so don't fucking kick it or stand on it or anything. Like a tenth of a second off, but yeah, right. Yeah, just that chance. Then. Twenty-two. What size is on the breaker? Twenty-two as well. Twenty-two. So, <laughs> so you get it on your end. <laughs> so I can lever against myself. That wasn't that tight, to be honest. Right, that one's loose, man. Does that mean? I don't know what it means, but... Well, if it has moved, it's the tiniest, tiniest bit. Am I in frame? Yeah, you're good. Pretty sure. That's that loosen. Oh, what a tune! Bit of fucking chasing waterfalls, TLC. That ain't fair use. Hey, it's not fair use. Fair use. Oh.
but these cams are so aggressive um, that what we're going to do is space out the inside with these shims uh, just little spacers and what it does then is the rockers inside the valves are just going to push these up that bit more higher and that way the cams can be like ground down even smaller so this just makes the the kind of lift even higher because it's like spaced out it's so oily and it doesn't look nice I think we should have dipped these a bit. I mean, maybe. Just because if that's, that's, that's affecting my eyes, it's just a metal spacer. Eh? No, but and again, like that's going to move underneath and just get oil in it anyway. But like I say, it's not a bad idea to just preemptively lube shit up as you're putting it in. Yeah, that's an aggressive lift, man. It's going to be like pop, pop, yeah. pop, pop. Yeah, it's using my own buckets because um, obviously all these walls will have just ground down over years and have all the grooves on the outside of these buckets as well. So it's all going to be it's all going to be familiar to itself. So. Oil over the tank. Don't want that. Right, then we'll just zoom through and do the rest and then we'll see how they sit in. Right, I've just noticed that the, uh, the cams have got a little hole in the end there. And there's like a little pin in there on the other cam. And I think it keeps it in position on the cog. So we're hopefully going to be able to get the other ones out of the old cam and put it in there. but. Yeah, luckily we noticed that. Show the cam. Show the cam. <laughs> Camera. And so, there's the hole that we've got in the new one. We just had that bit of metal. Just, uh, just in there like that. So we just got a dot punch, tapped it out with the hammer. Job's a good one. Put it in the new ones. Send her home. Yeah, man. Oh, Pins are back on. Just wasn't something we expected to run into because, uh, yeah, didn't know that was a thing, but. Yeah, took the old one off, bosh the new one in. And now we can put him in the car, yeah. And then Bounce. Good man, good moves. Thanks man. <laughs> Right, so having a bit of trouble since the new cams are so lifted. Obviously, we've got too much tension in the chain now, so we're just struggling to get the uh, the chain back on the on the cam gears. So I've just asked the boys, um, and apparently there's like a one of the tensioners inside the engine on the side under the cam cover. Um, you can release a bit of tension under there, so we're just going to give that a go. Just gotta be careful to keep it in the same place, but um, it's just meaning we've got to take this engine mount out of the way because one of the bolts is hidden. Need a, another socket on that side, hold it, so I can undo it. Yeah. Oh, it's one of them where you just more and more shit's coming off. Yeah. You, know, you just want to do one thing. Size. Show us going on. 
probably got the engine off. That's the tensioner there that I'm rinsing. I've got my screwdriver wedged in there, pushing that back. Gives the slightest bit of leeway on the chain. There's the snippies. There's the frim pongs. I ain't sure, I'm gonna check the floor behind you. Under the carpet, maybe. Yeah. Right, had a lot of trouble getting the chain onto the gears. They just, they won't get into the right position at all. Obviously there's more tension there because the cans are lifted up. Um, well, I've seen a couple of bits online saying try to put the retainer caps on first. Um, and looking at the gaps to be fair, because I'm going in backwards order now. Obviously we did one, two, three, four, whatever. We're going backwards. But if you look at the gaps that are here, it's quite big gaps. And um, I'm still, it's quite a lot of tension on this nut, even though the gap's quite big. So I'm hoping in, uh, hoping in. <laughs> I'm hoping in, <laughs> I'm hoping tightening these down will just sink the cams in a bit more and give us some more wiggle on there because nothing's working so. A bit of leeway, a bit of wiggle roomies. Okay, I don't think it'll be that bad. No, you're not right. going to there again <laughs> Finally got them in, pins in there. Pins in there and coming upside down. Pins are in, you can't even see them. So, so we couldn't get the pins quite lined up, but I managed to get enough tension off the chain by pushing the, uh, the little chain tensioner there and pushing that in. And then just about managed to line these pin holes up, but they weren't quite sitting in. So I, I, I tightened these down, even though yeah, the I mean the holes over here and where the, the bolt needs to go is like here but you can just about get it in and tighten it in moves it over a bit and then I was just moving these again and by pulling these to get these center again it was kind of rolling the cam rather than turning it it was like rolling um, and I just did that in a few different positions until the pins are close enough and then I just tighten these and it just forced the pins into the holes um, and then I've just knocked them both back to where they should be. Okay. Right, the, the only bit we haven't shown is putting the side cover back on and putting the rocker back on, but I'm sure you big boys know how to do that. Big boy. And then get these tightened, get this back out of the way, try and start her up. All your sparkies, all your HD leads are back on. Uh. Well, see what happens, I guess. Okay, gonna have to leave it there for today, unfortunately. Obviously, cams were all installed perfectly and in place correctly and all that kind of thing, but they weren't, engine wasn't running. I had a similar issue before on another engine of mine, because you can, you can hear that it's just, the engine kind of sounds like it's spinning freely and not really trying to fire. We thought it was spark at first, but we ruled that out by testing it. But yeah, we had this on a car before, my dad's car, and it ended up being that the timing was out, but we don't think it's going to be that. So I'm going to gather a few opinions and get some help on it, see what we can do, hopefully get it running soon. But yeah, it's going to be a two-parter. So that was part one. Hopefully you got some value from it at least. But yeah, I think it's just how aggressive the cams are because they are a really big lift. It's just going to need tweaking or fine-tuning or having the cams, uh, sorry, the valves adjusted or something. But yeah, we'll get to it and we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.